Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Good. Uh, if you want to catch more of our shows, you can catch us at Libertarian Counterpoint. Uh, oh, do, do we have an overtime session coming up? Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, we're going to wrap this show up now, and we will stick around for an overtime in case there is anything. Um, but uh, uh, thank you all for joining us so much. And uh, if you want to catch our shows, LibertarianCounterpoint.com. Uh, or uh, on Facebook at Libertarian Counterpoint, and we will see you at the next one. Thanks so much. So we have a uh, oh, we have a question. So uh, this is our overtime session now. Uh, so uh, we have uh, um, uh, a viewer from uh, uh, let's see his name is I, I don't want hope I'm not butchering the name, uh, but it's a uh, Masije Joram uh, Kinjojo, and he's watching from Uganda. Under dictator Museveni, now 37-year one-man rule. Oh, well, you know, it got, it, it says uh, um, Mount Race is humanity. So, um, yeah, it, thanks for uh, watching us. I was glad, glad to know we have people in other parts of the world that are, uh, that value liberty. And, uh, you know, we certainly hope that uh, uh, you're doing well over there. I, I, I certainly like the icon you're using, uh, Milton Friedman. <laughs> Yeah. He's certainly one of my heroes. So, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, it sounds like so you're saying black is just a coined word. And yeah, yeah it's, uh, you know, it's one of those, you know, one of the funny things I, I saw a long time ago uh, was uh, w when we had the, the word, which word is going to be used for race? It's always gets sensitive, politically sensitive from time to time. And so we had, uh, uh, you know, at some one point people were, uh, were called black if you were black at one point they called people colored i don't know if that's acceptable or not it's it seems to always gets changed and then they started using the term african-american and one of the funny things was i saw uh, an interview of uh sort of a mainstream media person interviewing a person from africa and they called him an african-american he said i am not an african-american <laughs> <laughs> but but it gets to be so meaningless. We're trying to use this this uh, culturally uh, politically sensitive terminology that we just lose all of our senses for what it actually means, and we start calling people things they're clearly not. You know, somebody who's from Africa calling them an African American. But yes, I, I just you know I, I wish people would stop dividing so much on race and see us for our humanity. I, I don't know. Do you guys have any thoughts or want to uh, share with our our uh, I yes. remember the white golfer Gary Player used to joke about being a, uh, the only true African American that he knew because he was born in Africa, South Africa, and he became an American citizen later on in life. So he truly was African American. They had dual citizenship, and he he used to joke about that. And anyway, so that's it. Always reminds me of that. You know, you know this 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 issue came up. This same this very same issue Tim is describing um, came up with me um, and, a, and a, a, a co-worker of mine. She too was born in South Africa. She could trace her. She have told me she could trace her her history in um in South Africa 200, 250 years back. Hmm. She's now an American citizen. Yeah. So, so, so is she an African American? She's white. She's white like you guys. She's she's African American. Yeah. Right. It's like because she has even, dual citizenship. This so. is the non, this is the nonsensical of this thing of trying to say African American and black is the same thing. Yeah. It is not. Okay. Yeah. Our, our, our human our humanity that stretches across what we call race, but this thing about African American, it's 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 a such it's such a. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I would even say a racist term to be used in, quite frankly. And even I, I use it sometimes, depending on where 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 I'm at. But I most times I don't use it, and I don't want people to call me African American because I'm not. Okay, yeah. I have I have African ancestry, which I have no problem with. But don't tell me I am an African American. Yeah. I have no concept of what that means in terms and of you have dual, yeah. you have dual citizenship, don't you? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I probably I probably still do. I I I don't have a um. A, I don't have a passport, a Trinidad and Tobago passport oh. anymore. I don't, but yeah. I don't have an American passport now. But um, I but, could, I could, yes, I could, but I could have dual citizenship. I could if yeah. I wanted to. Yeah. yeah. But, but even if I do have a dual citizenship, it's not going to be any any country in Africa. It's going to be no. Trinidad. 
No, it'll be in the Caribbean. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But it's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous film. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, but, you um, know. Oh, sorry. Are you going to go on, Leon? No, I, just, I was just going to finish. But, the, but there's only one race. Okay. There's only one race. Yes. It's a human race. Yep. But what have happened is that man have found a way, man are using that in the generic term, have found a way to divide us. And dividing is conquering. Dividing is divisiveness. Dividing is war. And that's what happens. Yeah. Well, in, we are heading along that path yeah. where we yeah. end up fighting each other just because of the color of our skin, just like people do have done over the centuries. Well, this is the scary thing too, is because it's not, it's not so much, uh, you know, it, it's not a good thing when anybody decides to just see super people superficially for their race, but where it becomes most dangerous is when government starts doing it. And I, I mean, you know, once, once government starts making a decision where it is literally <laughs> labeling certain people with different rights based upon their race, you know, we saw this with slavery. We saw it with Jim Crow laws. And yeah. I, I mean, you know, it's it's when government does it, because literally when the market does it, you know, I mean, if, or if a market, if an individual within the market does it, he pays a price because, uh, you know, this kind of a bias mm -hmm. is an irrational bias. And it is most likely going to cost you uh, some of your customers and some of your uh, mm -hmm. some of your market share. And so, you know, we saw this with the Jackie Robinson story. You know, you had all these baseball teams and they weren't taking advantage of all of these black players out there who were good talent. And finally, one team starts to do it. I mean, laws weren't required to do it. You know, they weren't saying you have to have a certain number of black players. Literally, somebody said, my God, some of these guys are really good. I want them on my team. And, yeah. and they got Jackie Robinson on and he led the way to other players because they wanted to compete. That was the issue. They said, my gosh, they, they, they just got this, this guy that we're ignoring because of his skin color and he's, they're kicking our butts now. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that, that is the way to get this reform. And by the time the voting rights act came along and tried to fix this stuff in government in 1965, because Jackie Robinson came in, I think in 48 or 49, it was sometime around then. But by that time, uh, black people were overrepresented in, in baseball at that point. So if, here comes government to fix the problem. And in the area where markets were allowed to function, the, the problem didn't exist anymore. At least, you know, there, there are certainly some problems with discrimination and markets that they played in. <laughs> But every team had black players and they were overrepresented in baseball at that point, all because of competition, because it, it was an irrational bias and the market got rid of it. And it does it fast compared to government, which, you know, you can literally go for centuries with this kind of nonsense if you let government deal with it. Well, you know, you know, even that word, that word you use, Jason, I know, yeah, I know you, don't, you don't mean any, any, um, anything nefarious about it, but that word underrepresented or overrepresented we are all human yeah. beings I, all I agree i agree i mean I agree. who could be who could be overrepresented or underrepresented anyway you see what is happening here yeah. what is happening here in our society now it's no longer the content of our character it's no longer the the color of our conduct it's no longer the condition of our competence it is just the color of our skin should determine who get benefits and who don't that is what they want that's what they're trying to get to. And this is where this whole overrepresented and underrepresented comes from. It is damn nonsense that is destroying us, that is putting barriers between people like me who look like me and people who look like you. When there's nothing, there's nothing about our skin color that should determine anything about whether we should have any sort of voluntary interaction. There's nothing about my skin color or your skin color that should determine that. It should be the contents of our character the condition of our competence and those things that should determine whether we interact or not. But no, I, 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 heading quickly in the direction where the skin color is going to determine everything. I, I completely agree with you, Leon, but I say that because overrepresented and underrepresented are kind of the sick metric that they're using to True. divide us up by skin color. And when you look at their own metric, the market succeeded where they, you know, yeah. they came along yeah. after the fact, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just, yes. So, yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So, any thoughts, uh, Screaming Eagle? <laughs> no, not really. No, I just, I, when, when Leon cuts loose, I just like to stand back and watch it, man. He's awesome. <laughs> the word. Yeah, the last word in Liberty. 
<laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. yeah, it's it's so sad though that I mean this has to be something in this that that we're still so tied up with race. But as long as government is carrying the banner, trying to lead, you know, this stuff with race, we're we're never going to get out of it. I mean, that's the the sad yeah. truth of it. Well, yeah. We, yeah. 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 Well, yeah, the the Democrats have to keep it up. Uh, otherwise, uh, they're going to lose uh, what they think is is a major portion of their base. They've got to keep up this facade that they are in the corner for the downtrodden, poor black person that just can't do it on his own. Good thing the Democrats and the Avengers are here. <laughs> to save us. Yes. To save us all. Yeah. For, for, for those of you, that comment was from a recent show where uh, somebody commented that Biden's cabinet looks like superhero. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know if the, the, the Democrats have fully comprehend the results of the election. I know it's looking right now that Biden is going to take the presidency. But there are some underlying data here that they should be really scared of. Trump got 8% of the black vote in, um, in 2016. He got 12% this time, mm. okay? That's significant. He got 18% of black men to vote for him, okay? That is significant. The trends are not good for the Democrats. The Democrats cannot win unless they have at least 85% of the black vote. Another thing, Hispanics. Trump did not get a majority of it, but he far exceeded Hillary's, um, he far exceeded um, um, his, his own totals the last time, and Mitt Romney's total when he ran against Obama. And so percentage-wise, he had done fantastic with Hispanics, especially in, in Florida, and I, that's how he, he easily won Florida. Those are trends that are trending against the Democrats, and I don't know if they have truly uh, comprehend the magnitude of what was happening in this election, even though they're rejoicing at Biden taking over the presidency. Yeah. Well, it's that I, I think maybe our overtime may have reached its last word here with that, Leon. Uh, I don't know. Did uh, anybody have any last thoughts before we close out? Not me. Well, Not well me. I, I hope you all have a happy uh, rest of your holiday weekend and. Uh, you know, stay safe and we'll, we'll, we'll be right on top of hopefully what happens with this election shakeout because things keep changing by the day. So hopefully uh, tune in for our next show and hopefully we'll have more, more for you then uh, from discussion on a libertarian, uh, you know, anti-mainstream media viewpoint. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Oh. Yes, indeed. Okay. Well, thanks so much. And thanks for that comment. Uh, um, I, I can't remember the, exactly how to pronounce it, but it was, uh, m m oh, excuse me. Uh, uh, m m um, thanks. Thanks for your comment. And we'll look forward to your uh, future, you know, comments. So thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.